So guys, I am really excited today because it's been years. It's been years since we've checked out some brand new wireless access points, especially from a new company. In this box, we've got three of the brand new Alta Labs wireless access points. And Wi-Fi is pretty much the same thing. It's wireless data transfer through the air to client devices. But these things manage the access points slightly differently than what I've ever seen before. Look at that, it says your network elevated. I like this. So these are Wi-Fi 6 access points and wow, these things look awesome. They basically look like a little pill here, a little different from the circle shape access points we're kind of all used to. We've got the logo on the side there and on the back in the form of a heat sink. And then we have our single ethernet port there, which is PoE. And then you've got what looks like screws in the side here, so basically all of your mounting accessories. Really wanna get these drilled up. Now, could this be the future of not only our studio Wi-Fi, but Wi-Fi in general? Because these things have some really cool tricks up their sleeve, which you're gonna to wanna to stick around to find out what they do and how they differ from bog standard access points. <laughs> So I've installed an ethernet port here in the studio so we can test this out. I've got the Alta AP plugged in here. Now this is where instantly these start to differ from other platforms like the stuff from Ubiquiti and even the stuff from TP-Link, their Omada stuff. You need a controller and whether it's a physical controller that's in your house that you have to buy or it's one in the cloud, it's needed and these things usually cost. With these, there's no controller involved that you need to pay for and it's all managed online. So I've gone here to manage.alter.inc and I'm gonna click sign up and make myself a quick account. Okay, so now I'm logged in. I have no idea how this is, is working. My laptop is on my Wi-Fi already. So, oh, I don't even know, I don't know. I don't know how this is working. My laptop is already on my local area network, which is in the studio. This access point is plugged into the local area network that's in the studio. And as you can see, it has appeared here as a new AP. This thing just knows that it's on my network and this is on my network and they've tied the two together. We can see the IP address here that the device has picked up on my local area network. We can see system load, we can see the current Wi-Fi channel and load that this thing is currently using, how many devices are connected, this is nuts. So we've got our tabs at the top here. When you click on the access point, these are the settings for this access point. But what I think we need to do is create a wireless network. So let's go into settings here and we've got Wi-Fi and let's add a new Wi-Fi, SSID, brilliant. Let's call this TechFlow. So you'll notice here that there is an add password section. And if I click here, it lets us add another WPA2 password. So what I'm gonna do here is put TechFlow in again, but I'm gonna put a one next to it. So this is where this gets really cool. We've got our one SSID here, which is TechFlow. And usually let's say if you're in I don't know, let's say a hotel environment, you would have a wireless network for the guests and a wireless network for the staff. And they would be separate names or SSIDs. With this, the thing that changes is the password, but the SSID stays the same. So if we click down for our password tech flow, we can go ahead and put this password on a certain VLAN and also limit the download and upload rate of that network. So to test this out, let's leave the TechFlow password as unrestricted and the TechFlow 1 password, let's restrict this to 5 meg down and 5 meg up and this is going to be for our guests. If we had our guests on a separate VLAN, this is where we could enter our VLAN here for the guests. Okay, so I've switched over to my phone and as you can see, it says enter the password for TechFlow. So let's just put TechFlow in here as the password and see what network it puts us on. Here we go, let's see what IP address we get. Ah, there we go. Okay, so I'm on my normal network, 192.168.55.1. Now this is my personal in the house network, which is for me and all of my devices. Now let's go ahead and do a speed test, our first speed test from our Alter AP here. And let's see what, okay, okay, okay. I like this, I like this a lot. That download is really, really impressive. 
Okay, so now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is forget the TechFlow network altogether. And then I'm gonna go back in and rejoin that network with a different password. TechFlow1. And let's see what network it puts me on now. Bear in mind, this is the same SSID as before. <laughs> and there we go. The router is now 10.1.11.1. It has successfully put me on my guest VLAN. Now, let's see if the download and upload speeds have been limited. Okay, let's restart the test. I think we limited them to about five. And there we go. As you can see, on the money, it's been limited to five. That is really, really, really impressive. And bear in mind, We've just purchased an AP here. Alta have taken this to basically new heights. I've never seen this before. You have one SSID and the way you differentiate people to be on different networks is you simply give them a different password, which is crazy. I didn't even think you could do things like this, but here we are. And as I've just demonstrated, it works fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and join the TechFlow network again on my phone with the standard TechFlow password. So I'm gonna be on my own private unrestricted network. And then I'll start a speed test on my phone. And as you guys can see, we're at 200 here. And yeah, straight away in this dashboard, we can see 600 megabytes a second being used. Wow. This is cool. And you don't have to pay for the dashboard. It just, it's just here. 641. I've never seen, I've never seen, I get 600 meg in and I've never seen Wi-Fi that consistent. Usually it hovers around 400, 500, maybe 600 if you're lucky. This has been, I've done two tests and it's been 650 every time, both times. Two out of two. I'm impressed. I'm really, really impressed. So I've been using these Alta APs in my personal home and studio now for the last month or so. And I want to tell you my experience using them. Now, I've been using Ubiquiti access points since as long as I can remember. I think I installed my first Ubiquiti access point in around 2014, 2015. So we're talking eight to nine years ago. What's made me switch now? And there'll be people behind the screen saying probably a fat check in the fact that Alta have paid you to say what you're saying and they've sponsored the video. And to be honest, you're kind of right. No, Alta haven't paid me for anything and they're not sponsoring the video, but this video does have a sponsor and that's Kingwin. Are you tired of paying full price for your favorite games? Well, look no further than Kingwin. Whether you're playing on console or you're part of the PC master race, like myself, Kingwin have an extensive library full of games and software at a discounted price. Kingwin offers unbeatable discounts on a wide range of games, from AAA blockbusters to the smaller indie games, so there's no more breaking the bank just to enjoy the latest releases. With Kingwin, you can get your hands on the hottest titles for a fraction of the cost. If it sounds too good to be true, well, fear not. Kingwin guarantees that all of their keys are sourced from reputable sellers, and they have a buyer protection program in place to make sure that you get what you paid for when you pay for it. Last week, I I was browsing for a copy of Windows 11 and I was blown away at the cost of this buying this through Windows. If you go to Google and type in Kingwin, they have Windows 11 product keys on there for basically a fraction of the cost. Why pay full price when you really don't have to? Now, if the prices on Kingwin are still a little bit out of your budget, fear not, because as a TechFlow subscriber or a viewer of this video, please subscribe, you can get a further 10% off using our code TechFlow, or just visit the link in the description. And a massive shout out to Kingwin for sponsoring this video.
So, it's fair to say that yes, Ulta are a brand new company. And when you've got players that have been in the game for a long time and have a lot of experience, anybody in their right mind would go with those types of companies and not with the newer ones. However, I would like to tell you that I have received zero slowdowns, zero mishaps, zero disconnections. It's been completely flawless and that is what Wi-Fi should be. There shouldn't be any problems and it should just blend in. It should just work. You shouldn't even have to really think about it. Now the access points I had deployed in my house before were the Wi-Fi 6 long ranges from Ubiquiti. And comparing these to the Wi-Fi 6s from Alta, they are absolutely massive, meaning the Ubiquiti ones make the Alta ones seem like tiny little things. The access points I had deployed from Ubiquiti, the long range 6s, were amazing as they are, and the Altas stand up to this claim, maybe are slightly better in some areas. What I have noticed throughout my testing is when there is an obstruction between the client device and the access point. So for example, there's an access point right behind this brick wall here where I originally had a Ubiquiti AP and now we've got the Alter one. In here, the speeds on the Alter are whereas the Ubiquiti would have been somewhere between 350 and 400. So the Alters are slightly better in that regard. Where the Alters really shine though is where there really isn't any obstructions between the client device and the access point. When there isn't any obstructions with my Ubiquiti access points on a 600 meg connection, I would get between 450 to 600. Whereas with a clear line of sight and the Alter access points, I'm getting getting 600 every time on the dot. I'm honestly not sure what's making that different, what Alter are doing to improve the performance here. And this is with the access points doing exactly what the Ubiquiti ones are doing set up in my house with everything connected whilst I'm doing these tests. Now this is the Alter dashboard with everything that I have connected to it with it set up in my house. So as you can see, if I go onto settings, I've got my Wi-Fi networks here. I've got my smart network, which is my 2.4 only network for all my smart devices. I've got Rural Boldo, which is my guest network. And then I've got Mars Media, which is my internal network. Uh, up here, this is your dashboard. Again, not really ever spending much time in this, to be honest. I love the at-a-glance information, and it's great if you are, let's say, you're deploying these around a venue, but for home users and business users, I highly doubt, other than troubleshooting, you're gonna be in the dashboard very often. You can also click on the network here and check out all of your APs. As you can see, here's my four APs. I love these graphs that update in real time. These are really cool. If you click on each access point, you get this setting pane where you can go ahead and choose the channel for the two and five gigahertz. This is where I'd like to see the power slider, something along those lines would be awesome here. And I just think maybe making it slightly more intuitive, but all this stuff will come with time. For example, you have to actually click on the picture of the access point to open this up. Instead, if you click on the actual text, it goes in to rename it. I would like to be able to click on the text and it open this and then me be able to rename it inside of here, for example. But I just think when you have a large number of devices on here, this page can get kind of clunky, as you can see. I've got a lot of devices on my network and we've got one, two, dot, 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 five, six, and it's sort of just a bit like, what, what's going on here? The colors are a really cool take on managing access points in certain areas. So as you can see, all of my Wi-Fi networks have the color black assigned to them. So if we go into our network here to view our devices, so black is assigned to all of my access points, which means that if the Wi-Fi name has black next to it, it's gonna go over all of my access points. If it has purple assigned to it, that will just be the access points inside of my house. And if it has this pinky color, assigned to it, that means it's just for in the studio. So if you wanted to deploy a Wi-Fi network in a certain area, for example, the colors are the way that you would do this inside of the network. And I really like the visual aid here. It makes things really nice and easy. But overall for now, all I am really bothered about is the performance of these access points because I know Alta are busy every single day because I'm talking to them about making this user interface better. They're also trying to design and work on a mobile app at the moment. However, I'm not gonna comment on that yet because it's still in the test flight stage at the moment and it's really a little bit buggy still so don't really want to comment on that but for the physical performance of these access points 
they work really well and I'm super stoked that I've got them in my house. And as for the software, great features, a few things they need to work on, but like I said, this is all software, so they can work on and push updates out literally whenever they would like to, and they have been. There's been about five or six separate updates throughout the time that I've used them in my house. So guys, that has been the Ulta APs. I'll put the links to them down in the description if you want to check them out. Let me know if you guys are using dedicated access points at home or you're just sticking with your plain and simple router built-in Wi-Fi jobby. Anyway guys, my name's been Alex. This has been TechFlow and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.